Hey everybody, welcome to the Big Igloo Podcast. I'm here with my sidekick, Travis Johnson. Yes. How you doing there, Mr. Travis? Doing great. Travis W. Johnson, That's right? That's right. All right. W. I remember W. Yeah, he's <laughs> kind of, what are you doing? Flashing symbols here and stuff. Sorry, gang signs. I'm <laughs> I <sorry>. guess, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What gang do you belong to? <laughs> It's the friendliest. Yes. It's the friendliest gang ever. You like go around and hug people or something. I don't know. Anyway, if you know Travis, that's funny. Otherwise, if you don't, um, it would be like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, yes, this is three, theology Thursday. Smart theology, dumb dad jokes. I hadn't I hadn't prepped the dad joke. So oh, I, you got any? You got, I do. Do you I have do. one? All okay. right, here we go. So what is what's our? So okay, sorry. Let me get my brain. Yeah. Okay. What is What's the, the, okay, so what, jeez, <laughs> what has, okay, so the Titanic, I, I keep trying, I get it, and then you laugh, and then I lose sorry, it. Sorry, sorry, I'll okay, stop. You're good. So the Titanic and Sixth Sense, mm-hmm. any any similarities there? It's Titanic and Sixth Sense, yeah. no, no. I see dead people. <laughs> I see, I see, but I, I, I got rim shot here somewhere. Anyway, that's too far away. Nice. That took way too long. Sorry. Did, <laughs> the delivery s- wasn't there. The setup was better than the, the punchline, I think. <laughs> Anyway, well, here's what we're doing. Hey, we're just doing this kind of New Testament flyover. And uh, this is really inspired by a New Testament class that I took. It's just called Intro to New Testament. And uh, you might think, man, Chris, you've been a pastor for how many years? And this is just an intro to New, New yeah. Testament. And, you know, hey, it was a master's level course, okay? Um, but here's one of those things, I guess, one of the, the takeaways that I had just from that course was, you know, hey, we never stop learning. I mean, there's so much to the Bible. There's so much more discovery. That's why we always say, hey, read your Bible, read your Bible. But at some point, it's not just about reading the words on the page, but really just looking for things that are there. And I thought about this. I thought every, you know, if you go out, you could go and hike a nature trail Mm -hmm. and uh, go find some cool discovery, you know, things out, whether it's Yosemite, Yellowstone, or, but, you know, a lot of times if you go with a guide, oh, if you go with a guide, yep. they can point out some things that make the experience more enriching. Yep. And I think that for all of us to study the Word of God, it's always good to go with a guide. Mm-hmm. It's always good. So hopefully you're tuning into this podcast because you're just looking for you know a guide. Uh, we'll do our best here. You know, I'm not saying I'm the most qualified, but maybe I'll point out a few things that you haven't seen before. And this certainly for me seems like I'm going to have a lot to say on this, and that's because my final paper was actually on this passage here. And so I'm, I'm really excited to get to this. We, yeah. We've talked about kind of the the differences in the accounts of Jesus's arrest. Yep. And that kind of set up this idea that when, it, especially when it comes to the gospels and really any book in the new Testament, what's the author trying to get us mm-hmm. to lock in. And we're going to see that more with Luke here in a second. Um, uh, but we, t- we, we started with that and then we started with the gospel of Mark and yep. we kind of talked about what was distinct to Mark. You mm-hmm. talk about all the suddenlies, oh, you yeah. know, yep. those things. Yep. And it's, it's important. There's, there's those styles that come across. You know, if I were to write an email uh, to a group of people, I'm going to, there's going to be a way I carry myself, say things. You're going to say sure. things differently. And and sometimes you can, even without seeing a name, you can go, oh, Travis wrote this yeah. or Chris wrote this, you know, because there's just a way that we come across. So I, I, got, I got a question for you though, Travis. All right. Who wrote, who wrote the majority of the New Testament? Uh, Paul, right? No. <laughs> What? Trick question. <laughs> Trick question. Okay. If you're going for quantity of books, uh-huh. if you're going for quantity of books, then yes. Okay. If you're going for the most words, it's actually Luke. No kidding. Luke. So we've got the gospel of Luke, okay. huh? and then we've got Luke's sequel, which is the book of Acts. Yeah. Okay. So Luke wrote both of those things. And honestly, so I guess um, uh, something my New Testament professor said was, uh, the the scroll lengths usually were somewhere around I, for, for some reason it's sticking out like in my brain like twenty eight feet but just call it thirty feet roughly yeah. so a whole scroll that you could you know write on and uh, and Luke uses up pretty much an entire <laughs> scroll for both his gospel and oh, the book geez. of Acts so Luke was very detailed he was including a lot of stuff and actually so when you look at it um, both those take off almost an entire scroll isn't that interesting. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. So he he actually has, for, for length of content, mm-hmm. Luke has the most. So he's actually the most. Now that you say that, it does make, yeah, because like Luke does have a lot to say. Yeah. And he's, he's very wordy. <laughs> he's very wordy. He's put his accounts together. But we're going to talk about some of that stuff here. So here's here's what I'm going to do is, is uh, 
what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this one character in Luke 19. So if you got your Bible, you can go to Luke 19. We're just going to read verses 1 through 10. Very familiar story. And of course, if you're like me, you grew up in church, you heard the song about Zacchaeus, a wee little man. Yep. And a wee little man <laughs> was he? Was he? And he climbed up in a <laughs> sycamore, sycamore tree. tree. Wow, it's, it's just impressive that it all has to rhyme, right? <laughs> so Luke nineteen. Here we're going. We're going to read about this wee little man. Luke nineteen one through ten it says he, speaking of Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. Now I'm reading out of the ESV, just if, if you're following. Along. He was a chief tax collector and was rich and he was seeking to see who jesus was but on account of the crowd he could not because he he was small in stature so he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was about to pass that way and when jesus came to the place he looked up and said to him zacchaeus hurry come down for i must stay at your house today so he hurried and came down and received him joyfully and when they saw it they all grumbled he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner and zacchaeus stood and said to the lord behold lord the half of my goods i give to the poor. If I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Isn't that an amazing story? Good stuff. Yeah. And then here's what's, here's what happens, Travis. And this is the, I think this is what I want to do is we see this story, we read it. And in our minds, we put it in a nice little box and then put it on a shelf and then, okay, I know that story. What we, what, what gets lost. And this is why it's so important that we don't just automatically harmonize the gospels, mm -hmm. you know, cause there are similarities between Matthew, Mark and Luke, especially, yep. you know, there are stories that kind of are told and retold and maybe slight details, but the thing is, is we do need to understand the Gospels within just themselves. Okay. Luke is telling us this story for a reason. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why he's left some stories out. Now, we can't know what those reasons are necessarily sure. all the time. But there's a reason why Luke has specifically put this in his narrative. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing is, um, how many descriptions do you see there of, uh, of Zacchaeus? How is he described? What are some things there? Uh, small man. Okay. Small in stature. Okay, small in stature. What about his uh, profession? Uh, well, he's not liked. It's like okay, so, yeah, he yeah that plays into he's not liked. I mean, the, he he's a man who's a sinner, right? His town, right? So tax mm -hmm. collector, tax right? collector. Is he just a tax collector? No, no, he's a ruler, right. yeah, a chief okay. among them, right? Yeah. Okay, um, and and uh, social status, or I mean, not social, but social e socioeconomic status. Like, I mean, he's wealthy. He's wealthy. He's yeah, a rich he's, man, right? <laughs> okay. Couple other details here, and these are the things I want to I want to focus on. Jesus calls him a son of Abraham, but also that he's lost. Mm. Now, here's the thing: I want to start with the son of Abraham language, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's so important. Because Luke has something to say about Abraham. Would you like to know what Luke has to say? <laughs> Do tell, please. That's why you tune into this right. podcast. <laughs> um, so here's the deal: what, what I want you to see is there's kind of this. We see ruler. Tax collector, rich, sinner, son of Abraham, and lost. Yeah. Luke uses all of these descriptors before. And this mm -hmm. is one of these things where it's so important that we don't just read the story of Zacchaeus in isolation, but that we actually, we have to kind of know what all's happened before this. Okay. Because this is a good example where all of these terms converge on this one person. Mm -hmm. So let's just kind of look at this, okay? If you look if you look through the Gospel of Luke, let's just say a ruler, okay? Now, in, in ESV, it says a chief tax collector. Other versions say a ruler among okay. the tax collectors, okay? Yep. Well, there's a couple of uh, places where we see rulers. And uh, just off your recollection, do you know how rulers are kind of depicted? Uh, well, I mean, they've been bad, right? I mean, I some think, of them I think are the, bad. I think the young... Uh, the rich young oh, ruler. Rich young ruler. There's another ruler, right? right. Yeah. Which right. was told in Luke, right? Yeah. Know, yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah. That's in Luke 18. That happens right, right before. before. There you go. Right? But he's not, I, I'm trying to think here. Remember, he's not the rich young ruler he's, in in that. It's a young. <laughs> he's a ruler. Yeah. He's a rich young. ruler, I think. Yeah. In, in Luke. I think. Ah. But anyway, <laughs> I'll have to double check that. But uh, but Yeah. So, yeah, so there's that ruler who, mm -hmm. who Jesus says, hey, sell your goods, come follow me, and he turn, he departs sad, 
Yep. So we've had that interaction with a ruler. We've seen a ruler among the Pharisees that Jesus is not really impressed with. Sure. Okay. Uh, but we've also seen, I believe it's Jairus, you know, so we see a, a, like a, you know, a Gentile ruler okay. that um, receives Jesus and is kind of favorable. Yeah, yeah. So ruler doesn't tell us necessarily anything. Mm-hmm. We've seen kind of good and bad. Okay. Right? Yep. Okay. Look, let's look at tax collectors. Okay. What about Ooh. tax collectors? Yeah, they're, they're the lowest low, right? What do you know of tax collectors? They're greedy. Okay. I mean, it, are they it, all greedy? Well, I'm sure not all of them. Are. <laughs> no, it's but like, it's like a lawyer. Like <laughs> it's kind of they got a bad stereotype, right? I'm actually glad that you said that because <laughs> the thing of it is, is sometimes we will automatically see tax collector, and I've done this, and I got called out for it by my professor. You know, like, well, that you know, Zach Keys is just ripping off everybody, yeah. and my my professor said to be careful. He goes, because he says, just because he says, yeah, tax collectors were notorious for that. Mm -hmm. Obviously they were seen as a sign of oppression because they're working for the Roman government. But he said, he goes, we must think of tax collectors like lawyers. Okay. We know that in law, there can be kind of a seedy underbelly, you know, kind of a dark, you know, um, cutthroat way of doing things. We make lawyer jokes about them all being crooked, but we as a society really, we we don't really believe every lawyer is crooked. Yeah. Right. And so with tax collectors, here's what's interesting, though. Um, while there would have been a negative perception among the people at the time of tax collectors, what's really interesting is that at the beginning of the gospel, John the Baptist is going out and he's preaching. Yeah. And who's responding to his teaching? <laughs> The tax collectors. Tax collectors. Yeah. Right? So what's really interesting is there's kind of this, wait a minute, Luke's trying to get our attention here of like, wait, who's paying attention? And so there's a spot where where the tax collectors, so we'll get to this in a second, but when John the Baptist kind of calls out the crowd and he's calling them to repent, the tax collectors come down and they receive his baptism and they look at John and they say, what should we do? Mm -hmm. And, And John says this, he doesn't tell them, quit your job. He says, no, only take what is lawful. Okay. Really interesting, right? Yeah. And so, so, so John didn't say, so again, John's not calling him out saying, hey, stop working for the Roman government, which is really interesting. He said, but he says, but hmm. only take what you're authorized to take because yeah. the practice was I could extort you, take, shake you down for more. Yep. You know what I mean? Right. And then keep a little more for myself, give it to Rome. Okay. That, that was happening for, sh- for sure. Yeah. But, but what we see through the Gospel of Luke, it's mostly tax collectors that are responding. So what's weird Dang. is Luke's actually painting this marginalized group somewhat in a favorable light. Yeah. And that's kind of controversial. Yeah. These are the guys that are actually like listening to Jesus and, yeah. and taking according it to seriously. Luke. Yeah. yeah, according to Luke. Yeah. Wow. So, so then, then we have to get to, okay, the rich or the wealthy. Mm-hmm. Luke's not so kind. <laughs> Luke's not so kind to the wealthy. Okay. If, if we're just really clear yeah. here. Um, in fact, Jesus in chapter six, he warns the wealthy. He, there are his woes to the wealthy. And he basically goes so far to say things like, um, woe to you, well, you know, those who are wealthy, because you've received your comfort. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Basically, that's it. That's, that's it. In the life to, you know, life to come, you won't be comforted because mm-hmm. you've received it here and now. Um a little bit later, Jesus rebukes the Pharisees because he says they like their comforts, they like their money, and he calls them greedy. Yeah. Okay, that's shortly before he goes into the the story of rich man and Lazarus. Okay. Oh wow. Here's what's crazy about the rich man and Lazarus, right? <laughs> so funny. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So you got the rich, rich man, man and Lazarus, right? Okay. And uh, Lazarus sitting there at his gate. Mm-hmm. He's at the rich man's gate. Dogs are licking his wounds, all that kind of stuff, you know, and he's just begging for a scrap that would fall from the rich man's table. Rich man's in his luxury. They both die the same night, Mm -hmm. right? And where's the rich man? He's in the place of torment. He's in the place of torment, right? Where is Lazarus? He's in Abraham's bosom. Yeah, yeah. at Abraham's side, right? Yeah. Which, oh, wait a minute. We haven't gotten to Abraham yet. He's quite a character, right? (laughs) We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. But... The thing is, is so Luke, or, you know, um, Jesus is telling this story. Jesus is telling the story. And again, this would be, this would be something, if we, if we put ourselves in that first century lens, you're, you're, you're reading this letter, there would have been a way in which, and we kind of even do this today, that we, we tend to think that, well, you know, God favors the fortunate or they're, for, you know, people who have fortune or because God blesses them, yep. right? And so at that time, it would have been just been seen of like, well, God clearly loves you and blesses you. And it's amazing how human hearts have a tendency Mm -hmm. to do that. 
Um, but what's crazy is then we see a complete reversal, right? We see the rich man with Abraham. Or, I'm sorry, sorry, not the rich man. We see the, Lazarus. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we see Lazarus with, with Abraham, but the rich man's in the place of torment. You know, mm-hmm. and he's still trying to boss, you know, boss him around and <laughs> yeah. stuff. Hey, send him over here with some, you know, with a cup of water or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's really interesting. Um, but so, so the rich, and then, you know, you have the rich ruler yep. in a chapter before, right? In the chapter before, Jesus says, sell everything you own, come follow me. Again, the rich is not painted favorably. Yeah. Let's go to sinner. Well, sinners are coming out. They're also coming out to be baptized. Sinners are being welcomed by Jesus. Yeah. There is one spot where Jesus talks about unrighteous behavior. And he, so, I mean, you know, Jesus is not tolerant of sinful behavior. Right. But again, in Luke's gospel, if we just look at sinners, um, we see we see that they're largely received mm-hmm. by Jesus. Yep. Um, before we get to son of Abraham, we'll go to lost. Okay. okay? Um, and uh, I didn't write down my reference here, but uh, if lost... So when Jesus says, so what I want us to connect with is ruler, tax collector, rich, sinner, son of Abraham, lost. All of these titles that Luke has given us some insight on, these all converge on Zacchaeus. Oh, interesting. So this one person, right, carries all of these titles. And Luke has had something to say about each one of those things. Because Jesus talks about like the lost, like the parables, right? The right. lost coin. Lost, lost coin, sheep. lost sheep, lost son. Yeah. But specifically with the lost sheep, that is a reference back to Ezekiel. Mm-hmm. And it's it's escaping my mind right now, which is, but but it's it's the one where Ezekiel prophesies to the quote unquote shepherds of Israel, mm-hmm. which would have been the spiritual leaders. What does he say? He says, You guys have fed yourself, you've clothed yourself, you know, in comfort and all this stuff, and you've neglected the sheep. And so God says through Ezekiel, he says, I will go and seek out the lost sheep oh, wow. myself <laughs> because you shepherds aren't doing it. Yeah. And so when you look at, when you look at what does it mean to be lost, a lot of times we've kind of squashed the definition of to be lost. We just mean, well, if you're a lost sinner, it just means you need the spiritual renewal, the yeah. spiritual awakening. But Luke sees this bigger picture. To be lost is like you don't have good leadership. It could okay. mean it could mean uh, financial insecurity. Wow. It could be um, it could be social alienation. Mm-hmm. Lost is all of these things. So therefore, mm-hmm. salvation, according to Luke, speaks to all these things as well. Yeah. It's not just a quote unquote spiritual condition. Of course, we understand that it is. I mean, it is, sure. but, but it's also Luke has, has a much, much more robust yeah. um, picture of salvation. And so when Jesus says the Son of Man must come to seek and save that which is lost, he is calling himself the one from Ezekiel yeah. that God has come to seek. And, and so then what's really interesting oh. then is when you look at that, so you have the lost, lost sheep, lost coin, lost son. Only one third of those are due to the person's, you know, personal responsibility. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, the coin's just lost. Yeah. It needs to be found. It needs yeah. to be restored and returned to its proper place. The lost sheep. Okay. I mean, you know, sheep are dumb. <laughs> But a good shepherd cares for a sure. sheep and will keep it, you know what I mean? Yep. And and but again, it's really more upon the shepherd, at least from a biblical perspective, mm-hmm. to care for that sheep. The sheep are lost, according to Ezekiel, because of the shepherd's neglect. Wow. Mm. And so lost means more than just, well, you're just a <laughs> nasty sinner who just needs Jesus. You know? <laughs> anyway. Now let's Dang. get to this. Let's get to this okay. issue of Abraham. Yeah. And then we'll kind of bring this all together. Okay. <laughs> so we get to the to Abraham. Now, Abraham, what's really interesting is if we go back to the beginning of Luke, Luke has Mary's Magnificat. Okay. Right. So she finds out that Ma- she's Magnificat. Magnificat. It? So it's like this song, right? Okay. The song that she breaks into, you know, uh, my soul rejoices in the Lord. And she goes into this beautiful thing, which is really interesting because if you take that and then put it beside Hannah when she's when when Hannah is pregnant mm-hmm. with Samuel, um, that's it's amazing the parallels oh, wow. between the two. Um, some differences, mm-hmm. but but still pretty interesting. But Mary, she's praising the Lord and she's talking about how great and wonderful God is and how he cares for his people. And then she signs off basically as, you know, God, you know, of, of our father, Abraham is faithful, you know, to, mm. to all these generations. So, so, so already we're, 
in a way, Luke sets the stage early for Abraham, like pulls him in. Mary's Magnificat, right? Mm -hmm. A couple chapters later, we see John the Baptist out baptizing. He calls the crowd a brood of vipers, mm -hmm. okay? Which, you know, what preacher's doing that today, getting a crowd, right? <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, he calls them a brood of vipers, and then he, then he says this. Now, granted, he's speaking to a bunch of Jewish people, descendants of Abraham, biological descendants of Abraham, yeah. right? And he says, he rebukes them and says, don't appeal to Abraham as your father, for God could raise up for himself sons of Abraham from these stones. So the thing is, is like already that should make us like lean forward in our chair and go, what are you telling us, Luke? Mm -hmm. What is John saying? What would he be? Of course, these are Jewish people. Of course, they are sons of yeah. Abraham. And, and, and basically what Luke is doing is he's serving us. He's putting us on, on notice of like, don't assume who a child of Abraham is. You don't know who a child of Abraham is. Damn. So it's really interesting because then what ends up happening then is uh, is we go through and we pay attention to Abraham and where's Abraham? How's Abraham being talked about? Well, when you get to the story of rich man and Lazarus, where's Lazarus? Yeah. Next to Abraham in the story, right? Mm -hmm. Even though he was oppressed and not taken care of on earth, in the kingdom of heaven, he swapped places. He has the privileged position, yeah. right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's a woman on the Sabbath. Jesus is speaking. He says, woman, thou art loosed. She stands up straight. Pharisees get all bent out of shape because what are you doing? You just healed on the Sabbath, right? And Jesus says, w wait a minute. This woman who's been bound by Satan is also a daughter of Abraham. Dang. He's calling them out. Yeah. He's calling them out. And he's basically saying, you're not taking care of people. You don't, you're, you're, you're not taking care of, mm -hmm. of people. You're, you're, you're not tending to the sheep here. You're so caught up in getting things quote unquote, right. You're going to rebuke me for healing her. And she's a daughter of Abraham. And you, you, but you don't treat her like that. Yeah. So, so again, Luke has in mind a lot with this, with, you know, social alienation and things like that. Yeah. You know, any thoughts or what? Yeah, we're just pulling in Abraham. It's like, it's interesting. When you said lost, it's like, it seems like son of Abraham and then lost, those two don't go together. Yeah, it's right. Like it's, they seem to be, you know, conflicting. Yeah. But now that you explain that, it's like, it's interesting that it's, yeah, that, I mean, that loss being a little bit broader. Yeah. Not just not talking about, you know, like salvation in a spiritual sense. Yeah. But, yeah. Which it is. Yeah. It is those things. But it's also, it's, salvation speaks to, again, how, again, how is money used? How is, uh, how is someone's social status? The woman who was hunched over, I guarantee you, she probably didn't have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. You know, because again, that was like a sign of affliction. Or like, oh, you know, stay away. You know, and that, yeah. that would have been kind of this stigma that would have existed around here. And it's like Jesus steps in and says, no, she's the daughter of Abraham. That's why I healed her. Yeah. Which yeah brings that, that inclusion back into like yeah. you know, God's family. God's, yeah. Wow. Yes. So so let's kind of let's kind of wrap this up. Mm -hmm. What what does this all have to do with Zacchaeus? And, and the reason why I point out all of that stuff is because we got to pay attention to what's happened before. So a couple of things here that I want to mention. If you just go to the chapter before, you know, chapter eighteen, which there were no chapters when Luke wrote this, but if you go to chapter eighteen, there's a couple of things that's really interesting. When, when it comes to, um, you know, Jesus is going through and talking about receiving the kingdom, he makes a statement where he says, unless one becomes like a child, they can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Then he goes, you know, and, and then goes yep. to the young ruler, the rich ruler, you know, goes to him, says, hey, sell, sell all your possession, possessions, come and follow me. So what's interesting is that is setting us up for the story of Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. You know, again, in Luke's mind, he's, this all has a purpose. It all has a yep. reason why it connects. So think about this. Zacchaeus, this is, so he's a wealthy man. Well, that should be a strike against him, according to Luke's gospel. But he's a tax collector. Well, okay, but tax collectors have been favorable. So was, again, it's like, well, how, what am I, Luke, what am I supposed to do? Well, he's yeah. a ruler. Well, that's kind of a mixed bag, right? The people call him a sinner. Mm -hmm. Okay, but again, sinners are coming to Jesus. Jesus is hanging out with sinners. So I, I'm real conflicted. How should I be right. thinking about Zacchaeus? And, and there, I think there's some details here. Number one is this. It says, the text says that he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree. A Middle Eastern man 
who's wealthy, maybe middle-aged or whatever, would not run. Okay. Why That's that? so undignified, mm-hmm. which is really interesting because when you think back to the lost son, mm-hmm. it's the father who runs, runs. to his son, which yeah. that, again, would have been shocking to the crowd. <laughs> what? The patriarch? The, you know, like, why would he, like, that's, again, that's, that's socially mm-hmm. undignified. that You don't do that. But Zacchaeus runs up to meet him, and then not, it's just, not even to just stop there, as if that wouldn't have been shameful enough, <laughs> he climbs a tree. tree. But in our, in our day and age, who climbs trees? Kids. Mostly kids. Yeah. I, I, think, I think what we're intended to see here is that here's one who's going to such a place of humility, mm-hmm. they will risk their social reputation. Maybe they don't have much of one because obviously people are calling him a sinner. Right. Right. So, so here's one who's willing to run to see Jesus, act like a child, run out in front of the crowd, mm. climb up a tree, and then Jesus is like, I'm coming to your house. Interesting. Isn't that crazy? And then it points out like the small stature. Is that, is that again? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's a, you know, so he was even childlike in stature, <laughs> yeah. right? I can relate. It's, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because you were just telling me about the, the youth conference that, that you went to and you got oh, yeah. mistaken as a student. <laughs> yes. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, man. I'll like, take it, yep. like when you're 90, they're going to think you're 47. <laughs> so it's, it's all right. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> but Zacchaeus, no, I, that could be, I mean, granted he, he definitely was short, but, mm. but is that a descriptor? Because again, does Luke want us to because he's just talked about how Jesus says we must receive him like children. Oh, yeah. Children would have also been a marginalized group in society. Hmm. Okay. So again, the fact that Luke includes this 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 group of people, you know, receiving the kingdom like a child, that would have been like, but they, you know, in that day would have been like, well, but they're not that important, mm-hmm. you know. We definitely value children more today than than they would have at that time. And so, so it's really interesting that, that we see this. So here's Zacchaeus. Now, here's, here's the trick, and here's the, here's, the, here's the controversy here. The majority of people will teach Zacchaeus repented, right? Okay. Because he pledges to give all of his possessions or half of his possessions and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Here's what's really interesting. Luke speaks of repentance and conversion more than, more than any other New Testament writer according to my professor, Dr. Green, shout out to you, right? Um, According to my New Testament professor, he says Luke speaks of that, but yet it's nowhere mentioned here in the text. That's interesting detail number one. Um, And again, I've I've kind of looked at this passage and again, just kind of accepted, oh, Zacchaeus repents. Well, it never says he repents. In fact, here's what's interesting. If you go to the Greek, and I'm not a Greek scholar, but as I understand the commentaries and some of the language around this, it says, so so here's Zacchaeus, hurry down, I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He's gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Now, it seems to me that Zacchaeus heard this, Mm -hmm. right? He's walking with Jesus, and they're like, oh, sinner, right? And it's like, at this moment, Zacchaeus, it says, and Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. What's interesting is, in the Greek, it is stated in the present tense. Like he's doing it right now. Like I'm doing this right now. Wow. I'm doing this right now. This is my pattern of behavior. Mm -hmm. And if I've wronged anyone, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, and if I have defrauded anyone, anything, I restore it fourfold. So there are some people who look at that and say in the Greek, he seems to be stating this, like this is a current practice mm-hmm. in which case it would make sense. Then when Jesus comes along now, I, I want to just say, I, I can't be certain. Sure. I just want to point out it can be read either way. Yeah. Either this is a pivot and he's going to behave differently or he's saying, he's saying, doggone it, Jesus, these people got me all wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was willing to risk everything is because I'm not even accepted here. And so I ran like an undignified Middle Eastern man. I climbed a tree like a child because I was just, I needed to see you. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. And so if that's the case, then when Jesus speaks of salvation, what Jesus is saying then is Jesus comes in and says, for he too is a son of Abraham then Jesus would basically be validating Zacchaeus wow. and saying, I came to seek and save that which was lost. In other words, and here's where I think, I think that we can connect the dots. Even if, if Zacchaeus is saying, this is my behavior moving forward, if he is saying, this is my behavior moving forward, 
or even if he's saying, I've been doing this all along, I think what we're supposed to connect with is he's actually, whether it's from this day on or he's been doing it all along, this is how leadership should operate in Israel. Mm -hmm. Because he's not defrauding. He's being charitable with his wealth. And when leaders live for others rather than for themselves, that's being a proper shepherd. Mm. And so it's like Jesus' visit on some form or another is a validation to Zacchaeus to say, I came to seek and save that which was lost. Yeah. So here's the deal, Zacchaeus. Either A, you don't have my social capital here, but I'm I'm throwing my hat behind you Mm -hmm. so that these people hear it and understand what you've been doing all along. Or if it is repentance, out of boy Zacchaeus, because now you're going to act like a true ruler of Israel yeah. should act. So I'll concede it could be yeah. either or. What, what do you think? Oh, I, I think I mean they both fit. Yeah, it does. It does seem to me that yeah, because he talks about Abraham and all this, it, it does seem to add that. And kind of again, it's because Zacchaeus is kind of this culmination of all these yeah. these attributes that Jesus is talking about before. It does seem to fit that yeah, yeah, that he would be. That he's talking to a little bit more of a, yeah, what would you call that social? Yeah, like the like social a, standing okay. or social status yeah. or whatever. And and again, I I'll take it back to what we said earlier. Luke intends for us to not assume. <laughs> yeah. So 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 again, put it in our con- modern context. Here's the takeaway, and we'll land here. What's the what's the takeaway for us? Well, the takeaway for us is don't assume you know who's mm. saved or who's not saved. Yeah. Don't assume. My grandpa used to say, my grandpa used to say this to me um, growing up. My grandpa, uh, grandpa file used to always tell, he used to always say this to church. He says, you know, you're going to be surprised who's in heaven and who's not. (laughs) (laughs) And I think, uh, I think Luke would concur with Mm -hmm. my grandpa because we as we as humans we make value judgments and sure. we 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 look at people and ah oh, they'll never oh, yep. dear, and and we might give up on people prematurely or we may invest in people that actually appearances look good but they're but they're not you yeah. know and so um Jesus knew the heart of people Jesus was able to he was able to say this is a son of Abraham this is a daughter of Abraham um but the lesson to us is 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 don't assume yeah you know, it's, it's really interesting because some of this language, and in my paper I kind of argued that that some of this is very similar then to when Peter goes to Cornelius. Mm. You know, that same word saved. Yeah. Yeah. And so here's Cornelius, <laughs> who's a Gentile, who's already been giving to the poor. He, he's he's in favor with the Jewish people. He lo- the Bible says he loves God, and yet he gets saved. Well, how does he get saved, you know, unless it is Peter goes there to validate Dang. Cornelius and there's a there's a Gentile Pentecost because he mm-hmm. and his household speak in tongues, all this kind of stuff. It breaks out revival, and then Peter has to go back to the council and go, guys, you know, and it would have required that kind of apostolic yeah. authority. Yep, guys, you will not believe what just happened. This was with a, with a Gentile, <laughs> but God gave me this vision. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then, we, so then when you look at that, it's like salvation. It's like here was a man who was practicing righteousness, right? He was practicing these things. Um, um, he needed a fuller picture for sure, um, but his heart belong to the i mean it, 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 it's just what's strange yeah. about it right this art belong to the lord we can wrestle with this stuff it doesn't fall into any neat mm-hmm. theological categories but um but it would make sense because that's the sequel right that's <laughs> yeah. luke's sequel to the book of of luke so anyway so good yeah there's depth that we just we were we were oh, deep yeah. and then we went even deeper <laughs> it's it's crazy and and again we could have we could have expanded so much more we're already kind of got a, a little long here but again the main thing is this is that when it's it's so important that we just clue in on some of these details and so as your as your tour guide i'm just saying pay attention to some of these words pay attention to some of these descriptions how else has luke used mm-hmm. some of these terms and when you do you kind of get this bigger picture and zacchaeus is just a great example where all those terms then converge so we got to take everything we've read before and it's converging on Zacchaeus. Yeah. So anyway, so good. Cool. All right. Well, Hey, thanks for joining theology Thursdays and uh, we'll, uh, we'll bring some more dad jokes and smart theology, <laughs> dumb dad jokes, smart theology, like subscribe, share, and uh, all that good stuff. Later. We lift you up.